Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine. My name is Isaac, and we are back playing some Feed the Beast Infinity for episode 70. And the first thing I want to work on today is something that we have kind of desperately needed for like the last five or ten episodes, because over the last couple of episodes, we have been doing a lot of interdimensional travel. We've been going to the end, we've been going to the uh, the last millennium, we've been going to the nether very occasionally, but we still do go to the nether every now and again, and we probably are going to end up going at some point during this episode, and it's a bit of a pain to go there and back and everywhere using all of the different portals and books and little blocks that let you teleport places. And so today, what we're going to do is we're going to start by making one item from Draconic Evolution, which hopefully is going to solve all of our problems and make traveling to all the other dimensions super duper easy. So that item is, of course, the Charm of Dislocation. Now, there are two charms. There is the standard Charm of Dislocation and then the Enhanced Charm of Dislocation. We're going to go straight in and make the Enhanced Charm of Dislocation because it is much better, and also it's not that much more expensive, depending on how you look at it. But uh, basically, the normal charm of dislocation is some blaze powder, some draconium dust, and an eye of ender. I think we have an eye of ender. I am completely wrong. We do not have any eyes of ender. That's fine. We can make those fairly easily. Once we have a charm of dislocation, which apparently warrants an achievement, we can go ahead and make ourselves an enhanced charm of dislocation using some uh, ender pearls, some draconium ingots, the normal charm of dislocation, and a wyvern core, which is, of course, made using four draconium ingots, four draconium cores, which are made like so, one, two, three, four, as well as a nether cube, which I think we have good stuff. How many of those do we have now? Nether, we got 56. <laughs> okay, so that's not a problem at all. That is actually more than fine. And then we can go ahead and do something like this, and that gets us the enhanced charm of dislocation. So, right now you'll see it says fuel zero. I'm fairly certain, if my memory served me right from when we did this in Sky Factory 2, that this thing runs on ender pearls. So to access the GUI, all you have to do is shift right click. This is what it looks like. Now it says fuel zero. I think you can add fuel like so. And I don't know if there's a way to do this faster, but you can see at the bottom there, I don't know if you saw that, my ender pearls were disappearing and now all 16 of my ender pearls are within the fuel slot. I think I can go ahead and add a lot more why am I typing in fuel? I think I can go ahead and add a lot more than 16 in if I kind of just sit there and just add them all in like this. What does this commit do? Um. Oh, let's type in. Let's type in home and then commit. And then we'll. Can we delete this one? Remove. Oh, we can. Cool. So what I think this allows us to do is let's, for instance, go over to here just to test. Oh, I right clicked it. So I think it uses an ender pearl every time it teleports you, if I'm not mistaken. We need to shift right click, and then we need to go ahead and select a new one, add new, and then if we say like outside, and, and click enter, that's going to add outside to it. So now, if we were like, if we just right click it, it's currently set to home. So if we just right click it, boom, we end up at home. Now, if we were to go ahead and set outside as our little area that we want to go to, or we could right click it here, and that would teleport us, but we can set it as our default, and then we can right click it anywhere in the world. And boom, we get taken outside. So what we're going to do is basically we're just going to set this point here. We're going to set home as our default. That's not what I want to do. We're going to set home as our default location. So no matter where we are in the world, we can always get back to home as long as we have uh, A, some ender pearls, and B, the charm of dislocation. So we can go ahead and just like add a ton more fuel. I don't know if there's a way to like add a bunch of these in, like add more than one at once. Maybe up, down, no. I don't think there is. I think you have to literally just click this over and over and over again until you've got the, the amount that you want. Uh, to be fair, as long as we keep on track of this, I don't think we're going to be in any issues. Uh, the only downside would be if we ended up somewhere like in the end, which we can go to now and, and go set one in the end. The only downside would be if we ended up in the end, falling through the world like that, without any ender pearls and any means of getting back. Because uh, right now, uh, we do have the, the dragon portal, actually, which is one way we could get back. And, oh my goodness, look at all these guys. Uh, it would have only been an issue if we didn't have if we hadn't have beaten the dragon, which I will uh, talk about later on today as well. But uh, let's just quickly go ahead and set here. Oh, do you mind? Do you, do you mind? <laughs> that was very loud and also very annoying. Let's set it like, I kind of want to set it like near the portal so we can kind of get out and do stuff quickly. I didn't want to do, oh, I set one. Oh no, I, no. Okay, this is fine. I accidentally <laughs> set home to here, which is not what I want to do at all. Oh my gosh, look at this. I didn't realize we got so much draconic dust when we, uh, when we beat the end dragon. That's cool. Okay, I'll take all of that. Let's go ahead and let's set, let's shift right click, let's add new, and let's just call it end. There we go. Done. Enter. Now let's teleport home. Jeez. Flipping these guys. Then let's head on back inside, and then let's recreate the one we just lost, because we do, in fact, want the home one to be somewhere like here. 
So let's do that and then set here. We, of course, want to have one in the Millennium. Because we're going to be spending quite a bit of time over here as well. And this, thankfully, should be the last time that we come here. And then when we go back, we don't have to go back to this portal. So we don't have to go flip into the beginning of the world at spawn. And then have to teleport back to where we normally were. Instead, we can just go ahead and kind of stand like here. Shift right click. Add a new one. Call it the last... Mm, with a Y. <laughs> Millennium? I don't know if that's how you spawn Millennium. But hey, that's fine. Boom. And then we can go ahead and teleport home. We can just right click on that. Or we can just right click on the other thing. And now, to be fair, we could probably just get rid of this portal. We don't actually need it there at all. I'm going to leave it because we might need it at some point in the future. But uh, we could just leave it there. And finally, the last thing I'm going to do here is go on through to the nether. Now, one problem we have been having with our power system is, if you remember a few episodes back, we actually created uh, a bunch of nether star generators. And I think we might be on peaceful. We're not one easy. Let's put that up to normal. Um, we set up a bunch... Oh, <laughs> didn't mean to do that. We set up a bunch of nether star generators with the hope that we would generate enough soul sand from our uh, sludge boilers to make... To keep the to keep the um, wither spawner up and running. Now, unfortunately, that hasn't quite been the case. Since then, the wither spawner has stopped working, and we have stopped getting nether stars, which means we are no longer getting the twenty-five thousand RF a tick from the nether star generators downstairs, which is not a good thing. Because uh, once again, let me just add new with having nether. Because that 25,000 hour of a tick is a lot of redstone flux per tick. That like doubles the amount of redstone flux that we are generating. So uh, one thing that I would like to do is probably in a future episode try and come up with a new way of generating some more soul sand. But for now, what I want to work on, now that we've got our charm of dislocation all up and running with all of the locations that I would like in all of the different dimensions... Actually, we should also probably put one down by the quarries, but I'll do that between episodes because you don't need to see me fly out to the quarries and put down another one. What I would like to do today is I would like to fight the Ender Dragon again. So we did it last episode, and I was talking about maybe ways of bringing the Ender Dragon back so that we could fight it again. And I, there is a way of doing it through Biomes of Plenty, but I don't think we can do it because we didn't choose Biomes of Plenty as the world generation options, and some of the items don't seem to appear in NEI. But a few people in the comment section of the last episode did point out that there's actually a way to bring back the dragon using Draconic Evolution, using the ritual of Draconic Resurrection. So the way we do that is, first of all, we're going to need a couple of stuff. A couple of stuff? A couple of things. First thing we're going to need is the Resurrection Stone. This is the core of the Resurrection Ritual, and is made using a charged Draconian block, four Wyvern Cores, and four of any mob souls. So Wyvern Cores should be fairly easy if we go ahead and make like 16 of these, which I... Oh, that might be too expensive. I think we have enough Draconium to do this. Oh, we do. Cool. We're at 17. That's fine. And then let's go ahead and do this and make forward those. I did set up the chest again down in the mob spawning room, and I'm not quite sure what the heck's going on with this. Every so often when I come on, these are just broken, but uh, hey, that's fine. Uh, if we go over here, I did set up the chest again to try and gather one or two of the mob souls. It doesn't seem like we've been getting any. It has filled up pretty quickly. I also put the sword back in there as well so it could keep working, but... Thankfully, we did have, uh, I think, like six mob souls already in the AE system. So, if we go ahead and type in mob soul, you can see we have three skeletons, uh, sorry, three zombies, one angry zombie, and one skeleton. So, if we do something like this, I also made four more charged draconian blocks. Um, now, I think we're going to need five, because I didn't take into account the one that we need for the resurrection stone. However, yeah, I'm fairly certain we don't need it. If we get rid of that, and get rid of that, and then grab some draconium, and do something like this... We can do that, and then boom. And yeah, we can use a Draconian block instead of using a charged Draconian block, which is definitely a lot cheaper, and is definitely what I'm going to do. Not quite sure why that's even there. It seems ridiculous. Why would you use a charged one that costs 100 million redstone flux when you can use a default one? I don't know, but hey, we now have ourselves a resurrection stone. This is the center of the ritual. Then we're going to need some obsidian, specifically four. So we'll take one, two, three, four of you. We're going to need four glowstone blocks. So we'll take three and then four of you, not a mob soul. And then finally, we need a bunch of quartz pillars. Now, do we have any quartz? We have some nether quartz, not a ton, but that should be enough. So we need how many? We need 12 quartz pillars, which I think requires like maybe a lot of these. <laughs> Let me see how many 10 makes. 10 makes 10. Okay. So we need 12. Like that? Maybe? No, that gets 14. Okay, that's fine. That's more than enough. We then need four diamond blocks. Four diamond blocks. Thankfully, we've got a lot of diamonds now, thanks to our new quarry setup. We'll take one, two. I don't know why I'm doing it like that. One, two, three, and four of those. And then finally, we need those four charged draconian blocks. Like so. I'll take all four of those. And we should 
be pretty much good to go. I think that's about everything. So, if we were to head on over to the end, we can actually set this thing up. So, this time, I'm going to go back to the overworld. And the reason I'm going to go back is because we are going to have to fight the dragon again here. So, when we resurrect the dragon, we are going to fight it again. We're also going to go ahead, and this time I'll probably just pick up the... Um, the dragon heart. Actually, you know what? We could probably uh, we could probably do the ritual again. If we take you, we then need four. Oh, we need four more charged draconian blocks, wouldn't we? So no, this time I'll just grab the heart and just kind of show this off. Look at that, it's back again. It's fixed itself. What the heck's that about? <laughs> um, yeah, we don't have enough charged draconian blocks to do the ritual again. So this time we'll just pick up the dragon heart for uh, for future use. But we'll go back to the end, and the dragon does get harder. I believe it gets exponentially harder, or maybe to a point. But it gets harder and harder every time that you resurrect it using this ritual. So, the ritual looks something like this. We need a 3x3 three three hole in the floor. Like so. With the resurrection stone smack bang in the middle. Like that. And then around it, we need four glowstone in the corners. Like so. With four obsidian in between those. And I think it's combined this, right? Yeah, easily. Cool. We'll take that, put you down there. And then, we need the pillars of diamonds and of quartz not in stone <laughs> around this thing so i don't think it really matters how you set this up but from what i've seen of people doing this most people kind of set it up like this and i think the pillars can be like anywhere nearby in kind of any order as long as they're i think these pillars can be anywhere in like the near vicinity of this little uh altar but the thing i see most people doing is kind of something like this and then three and then like a three high pillar here, making like a bit of a circle. And I've done that completely wrong because it's not two. It looks more like this. It's one like that. Okay, it's one It's one high and then two high. Let me just quickly turn down the sounds for hostile creatures because those endermen are horrible. Let's go one, two, one, two. And then we should have the two spare. Um, we had 14, right? Did I leave one somewhere? There it is. Yeah, I'm going to say we should have two left. And then finally, we put diamond blocks on the shorter pillars and then the charged draconian blocks on the taller of the pillars. And then if we right-click in the center, it should go ahead and spawn the dragon in if this is done right. So we'll do that. We'll throw you down there. We'll right-click. There we go. We got to back away because it does do a bit of an explosion, which could be a little bit deadly. I'm going to make sure to get rid of the advanced draconic drill, the advanced diamond drill. Oh, Jesus. Whew, that's really loud. <laughs> I'm going to put the drill away so I don't accidentally use it. This should, you see all the, the things are reigniting, all of the, the pillars around us. And then once they're all lit back up again, we should get another dragon spawn in. Any, any day now. we go okay so now we've got a slightly evolved dragon you can see this one does look a little bit different to the original let's start by getting rid of all of these again because these things do heal the dragon i also believe this dragon starts with uh, like a regeneration buff for like the first maybe 30 seconds that it's alive so it's a little bit harder to kill and it also regenerates health from a these pillars and from itself for like the first 30 seconds so to start with, we've got to just go around and again, kind of get rid of all of these. The dragon's not quite as hard as the Chaos Dragon from Draconic Evolution that I talked about last episode. That's at the uh, coordinates 10,000, 10,000. But it is a little bit harder, although I'm not too worried because our armor is still kind of fantastic. And I don't think we're going to die anytime soon. So, where are you at? What I'm going to do is I'm going to kill this guy. I'm probably going to speed up because it's probably going to take a while. And also, I'm going to speed my armor back up because I did turn the speed multiplier down between episodes because I do not like walking at the speed. But I'm going to go away, guys. I'm going to try and kill this thing. And I'll be back in a second.
Okay, so a little while later, we've now beaten the new evolved dragon, and what I've done between when I've beaten the dragon and now is I went ahead and grabbed this little pickaxe, the obsidian pickaxe that we made like probably about 40 episodes ago now, and I grabbed this because it has the look on it, which is basically the same as Fortune, and I went over back to the end and mined just a bunch more Draconic Dust, and so now, because of the fact that we've killed the dragon twice, I picked up a ton of dust from that, and also the fact that when I went back to mine the dust, we were getting like four or five Draconic Dust instead of two per every all that we broke, we now have an absolute ton of Draconic Dust, so... The last thing that I want to do today is actually something that I've only just now figured out about, and that is these Draconic Dislocator Pedestals from Draconic Evolution, and these kind of tie in with the uh, the Enhanced Charm of Dislocation that we made earlier, and it actually makes a way for us to use the Charm of Dislocation without using any fuel, which is really cool, and I think is actually going to be really useful, considering I really don't feel like filling this thing up with Ender Pearls every single time I want to use it. However, it is going to cost us quite a lot of Draconium, because it in involves making quite a few more charms of dislocation so let's go ahead and grab all of those i don't think a charm of dislocation requires 30 uh, draconium ingots so the pedestal is actually really easy to make it's just a pressure plate some stone some stone slabs and a blaze powder i've gone ahead and made one already and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put them like over here i think i'm gonna have three one for each dimension one for the nether one for the end and one for the last millennium and i'm kind of gonna have them i think you know, we could just put one there, there, and there. And all we got to do is let's quickly grab ourselves another charm of dislocation. Like so. We'll go ahead and make one of you. And actually, we'll go ahead and make like six draconic eyes. Dead, not draconic eyes. We'll make six eyes of ender just in case we need that many. I don't think that we will. But we'll go ahead and make at least three of these charms of dislocation. And then we'll go ahead and just make flipping a ton of these. How many? One, two, sixteen to make the one. Ah, oh, jeez, we're gonna use, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say, we're gonna use a lot of Draconium here. Let's go ahead and just grab uh, a little bit more of that. Thankfully, we do have a lot. I don't know if we quite have enough to make as many as I want, but we'll see. How many do we have now? I think, like, ten of these should be more than enough. There we go. Boom. Boom. We'll take one of those. Then do something like that. And now, if we were, for example, to go to the last millennium, uh, let's shift right click. Let's just go to the last millennium. There we go. And then if we were to do something like this, we were to link this one to the last millennium, which I think does require at least maybe one fuel. Can I put one in? Do I have to have at least one fuel to set one? I think I do. Okay, let's add let's add one fuel. And then let's go ahead and add new. We'll call it last millennium. Again, not sure if that tastes about millennium, but hey, we'll add that there. We'll then use this one to go back home. And my idea here is to just use the one, the main one that we made originally, just to get home. And this one, if we just go ahead and right-click it onto the pedestal, like that, it's now on the pedestal. So now all we have to do is walk up to the pedestal, simply right-click anywhere on the pedestal, and it will take us to the last millennium without using any fuel. And then we can just use this one to get home from wherever we are in the whole entire universe. So that's the plan. I might. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make two more of those. Let's have a look here. The pedestals shouldn't be that hard. And actually making. Uh, two more of these shouldn't really be that hard. It just requires two more of those. And thanks to the number of nether stars we have, that's actually fairly easy. The only thing that we're missing is some of the draconium ingots, which we can get from there. And then just whack back in like so. And then we'll take one, two of those. We'll set one of those to nether, one of those to the end. Let's go and... Oh, how we, oh, we can just use this one, can't we? I was going to say, how are we going to get to the end? But we can just go ahead and right click. Loading screens take a little while, but then we can just go ahead and give this one a little bit of fuel. Add fuel. Uh, I'm not sure if we even need fuel. We'll just call it end. Done. Let's use this one to get home. I'm going to have to try and keep track of all these because it's just a pain. And then we'll quickly go to the nether before we... Uh, I'm going to crash the game at this rate. We're going to go to the nether to really quickly go ahead and load in this one. Add new nether. Boom. Go home. And then we should... Just be able to throw three of these down in three pedestals. Let me quickly pick up that book. Shift right click, by the way, to pick up a, a miscraft book like that. Pedestals, like I said, really, really, really easy to make. Like so. Uh, I think... Oh, what are we missing? We're missing pressure plates. Let's make two more of those. And then I think we're going to need a few more slabs to make that work as well. So we'll take one, two of those. And then we'll do something like this. Boom. Boom. And actually, oh, wow, they actually got a bit of a slant. Let's put this one like a slant. We can kind of have like a, oh, yeah, I like that. I like that. It's on a bit of a, a different slant. I'm not a huge fan of that. It seems like it's like really sensitive. That looks cool. 
I like that. And then we'll put one down for the end, one down for the nether. And there we go. We now have that's home. Wrong one. Shift right click to get it off. Is that right? Yeah, there we go. So now we have one for the end, one for the last millennium, and one for the nether. What I might do between episodes is go ahead and make three more of these uh, and then put them in the other dimensions so that we can easily get back. For instance, if we go to the last millennium, I might go ahead and put one down like here so we can just right click that to get back so we don't have to use the fuel for to use this one because like i said this one does use one ender pearl every time we come home using it which is a bit of a pain and would require quite a lot of ender pearls to keep up with and just considering that basically all this is is just making a pedestal out of stone and suddenly it doesn't require fuel i think it's a pretty good deal but with that guys i'm gonna end this episode of feed the beast infinity there if you didn't enjoy the video episode that like no idea what's going on with those cages over there it is episode 70 which means there will be a world download link in the description i am currently playing playing on version 1.9.0 which is the latest version of feed the beast infinity if you're wondering i would recommend you play that as well if you are playing with this world otherwise some things may not work some things may crash and break and all that kinds of stuff uh, if you're playing with the same resource pack there'll be a link down below to a tutorial i made ages and ages ago about how to get sfax for this mod pack you can play along exactly as we have it here link down in the description just drop it into your world file i believe there's also a link in the description that teaches you how to install the, the world file as well if you would like to figure that out but for now guys again thanks for watching if you did enjoy the video it like it really does help out a lot and i will see you guys next time